All right, let's be real. That title is just kind of a clickbait. These build plates are actually pretty sweet because they give you a lot of different options for products or stuff for yourself. So you can have it look like the carbon fiber or this diamond geometric, whatever pattern you want to call it. But there are some difficulties getting them to print. So I'm going to share a few of my tricks since people have asked. The first things that you can do to help are you have your part. All right, let's say that I'm making this is a sedan mirror delete plate. What I do is come in here to our bed temperature and this is also going to mostly apply to ABS prints, but you want to have the bed temp essentially maxed out at 110 C or just 100. If you're running the P1S versus 110 on the X1 series, Next thing we're going to do too is come in and check our cooling to make sure that we're not cooling for a while. And if we are, we're using much less cooling than on some other ABS parts or no cooling at all really is best. This one I do have just a tiny bit of cooling that comes on right towards the top on these parts just since there is a small section right there. So that's right at the end, it's getting up to 10% fan speed. For the next trick, this one is going to depend a lot on what texture of sheet you have. And if you come in and look at this, they actually only advertise it as a PLA and PETG sheet since I mean, temperature of ABS is a lot higher, so it's more likely for the glue that attaches all those to fail, but also it's a lot more likely to warp on the part two. You'll need to check and maybe start out by using, well, this one actually says textured PEI sheet, but a lot of these will actually say, if you come down here, that up to 180, and it actually works for ABS. It does say to use the smooth PEI or high temp plate. So what might happen is if your printer has been running for a while or you've crashed it a few times, what'll happen is the nozzle will be slightly bent and so that'll and you know, you think about it, it's flat on the bottom of the nozzle, right? And if it's crashed before, it's gonna be tipped slightly, which will make the level go off the corner of the nozzle in a sense. I mean, this is a bit exaggerated, but it'll be going off the corner of the nozzle. And so you'll actually, if this says smooth PEI sheet, then you may need to try using an engineering plate. And you'll find out because if you pull the part off, and you have a corner of it that's warped and you'll see like a separation line right here and it'll potentially be folded or just fail the print. You may need to switch from smooth to engineering plate. And if that's still not enough, the, the corners warp or there's a big separation in between the lines here, then you may need to switch still from engineering to textured so that it's filled in more, kind of how this looks. That said, if you start getting what looks like this in your print, where it's kind of rippled, then you know that it's too far down because all that material is piling up and creating waves on the back side of it. But if you switch back down, like this one being a textured plate option, switching back down to engineering, I start to get warping on the corners and whatnot, so it has to be textured. And I mean, that's not super noticeable, it's just in like certain positions and lighting that it kind of shows. So I try and avoid selling parts like that, but you know, if it works, then I just have to send it. Now for this next tip, we'll go back into the slicer. Uh, it's kind of the same thing for bamboo and orca slicer. So what we're going to do is check our speed. Now for this, where it's just a big flat object, I'll usually have it set down to 50 millimeters a second. Um, if there's a logo or text or something, 
cut into it that's on that first layer, I might actually cut that down to 30 millimeters a second. And the other thing you can do, instead of completely slowing that down that you can try first, is you come down here to your initial layer and that's usually set at 500 millimeters a second, but I turn it down to 300 just for doing textured plates. Now, if you have a logo or text in it or something, like I mentioned before, uh, if you don't want to decrease this speed yet because that makes a big difference, the acceleration is just how hard it will stop and then take off. So if you slow that down to 150 or even 30 or something like that, that'll really reduce the jerking. That's pretty much it as far as slicer tips. And then obviously you wanna make sure that the plate is as clean as possible. Whenever you pick up your plates, only try and grab them from here because if you're grabbing parts out here and doing this to flex the plate to pop it up and remove the part, uh, for one, it's probably not cool enough because if you continue to pop it up while it's hot, you could damage the build plate. And for two, if you're grabbing out here in the middle of it, regardless of what texture the plate is, you're putting oils out here and so the part can't stick to the build plate. So you'll wanna start over, wash it with soapy water because the alcohol doesn't always work. So, okay, back to the same zoom. So to get back to final tips, you just remember at the beginning of the video, I was bumping the Z offset up and down on this guy because you can manually adjust the Z offset while it's printing. So I have to do that, especially for the outer walls on this, to get a good amount of squish. So it's kind of a flat, wide area because the Z offset is not nearly, or yeah, Z and bed leveling is not nearly as accurate as the bamboo printers are. So if you have an X Max, haven't played around too much with the Magneto X lately, but the X Max, you can bump it up and down, get that first layer good and change the speeds. And then the next trick, as you can see, is using this here. It is a mold release, which yeah, you can kind of see there's some stuff on here and that's what it comes off looking like and it's just dissolves in water so you just have to run it under water and it'll clean it up really good and there you go now you can see the carbon texture right there comes off without damaging the texture by using water because the other issue I've had is when I started using this, a lot of people told me, oh, why don't you just use a glue stick? Well, the problem with a glue stick is the glue is actually super thick. So it might have lumps or just be completely smooth where a regular glue stick passes over. Now, similar issue with liquid glue sticks is they mildly fill in some of this and so you end up with stripes going back and forth through even after washing that off there's just stripes because it slight changes in the texture so for the best look i found using this uh water-based mold release now that there's already been some on this build plate I'll just put a dab of water on here to thin it out. So there's a thin layer going on. So of course you could use hairspray. This is just old school tricks, you know, before all these super smart machines and old school, I'm talking like three years ago at this point, it's not that old. Uh, hairspray just makes a mess. So that's why I went to using mold release. Haven't really seen anyone else using mold release, but it works really well for this. I'll have that linked in my bio and down below on this video.